My name is Beston. I live in Cape Town. Also, I do uh, delivery. Interbed helped me to realize my dreams. Now I have my own delivery vehicle and I'm able to do the removal in and around Cape Town. Hi and welcome to everyone joining us for this preview. It is for the Sunday, the 19th of March, Hollywood Bet Scottsville. Looking forward to racing. It'll take place on the turf track, as we all know. Joining me in studio is Rahil. How are you doing, Rahil? All good, thanks to yourself, Sheldon. I thought quite a competitive card. Yes, all good this side. Looking forward to a tough card, quite competitive. And looking at the fields, each race going to take quite a bit of studying and just take a close inspection of those horses in the ring. And when they go down to the start, watch the money likewise. Let's start off with a rerun of Captain's Christie when coming through to win on debut. And then we also have interviews lined up with Craig Udy and Jason Gates. Mia's Athena now asked for maximum. There's a wall of them. Epic Views trying to come forward on the outside. Dressed to the nines. Shamey me. Mia's Athena trying to fight on. Captain Christie on the inside. Captain's Christie coming to get them all. Captain's Christie from Mia's Athena. Then came African B10. Dressed to the nines. She can. Made a lot of improvement from her first run to her second run. And I would think uh, she's probably the, the one of ours to beat there. And expecting her to be right there. Uh, yeah, I've worked her a couple of times at home. Um, she, I, I think that her last start, she probably wasn't wasn't quite as ready as she is in, um, for this start that she's going into now. Um, yeah, I'm expecting a good run from her. African Folklore has done nothing wrong. Uh, she ran second first time out when she should probably have won, then came out and won well. The form hasn't stood really stood up there yet, but um, she's a nice filly. She galloped reasonably really well the other day, so another one for quartets. Lady Lacewing was also a little bit uh, disappointing last time, so we're just hoping for improvement on that run. African Beat, yes, she'd been having a couple of nice races, a little bit disappointing last time, and uh, we do expect to improve on that run, so one for your quartets. Thanks very much to the trainers, and after watching that rerun, I'm going to stick with number 10, Captain's Christie. I remember calling this one first time out, over a thousand metres. And although going off at 40 to 1, there were rumblings about this daughter of Captain of All. A few of the shrewdies said this can run. And I remember when Cole Dick in the post-race interview said that she had put up some good work back home. Raheel, Captain's Christie. I heard a few rumours first time that she could run, so didn't let her run loose at that price. And she came through. The extra trip's going to suit her down to the ground. Absolutely, Sheldon. And uh, yeah, she won quite a nice race on debut. And I think it's a very, very shrewd and smart move from Mark Dixon here to get Rachel Vinica because instead of having to give three kgs away, he only has to give one and a half kgs now, which I think is a huge positive for this uh, two-year-old daughter of Captain of All. We've seen a few of these two-year-olds turn, uh, turn form around with a couple of um, others here. So I think Captain's Christie, she's the horse that probably does set the standard on that first run. Epic view coming through to win. And then we heard from uh, Craig Udy there. He, he obviously fancies she can ahead of uh, the other horses here, but I thought African Folklore could be a could be a runner just based on the fact that she's had two starts to date and they've both been encouraging efforts. She does have the 60 kgs on the back. Now we have a jockey swap here, Tristan Godden rides this one, Serino's on She Can. I would not be surprised at all if African Folklore were to beat She Can quite comfortably. She Can, nice run last time out. I think the 1200 is going to suit her nicely and uh, she's one of the leading lights in the race. And then obviously Errol's legacy, she beat She Can on debut in that run behind Giver's Grace. Last time out, Jason mentioned, probably wasn't quite ready for the run. So she's another horse that can uh, get involved and then Giver's Grace who ran up in the high field last time out. She's a horse that I don't think you can discount but held at the weights here with a few runners. But I'm with you, horse number 10, Captain's Christie is certainly the one that they all have to beat. So it's fair to say we're both in the camp of number 10, Captain's Christie, who's currently trading at around 33 to 10. So that'll be our first selection. And then Rahil, for the balance of the runners, Givers Grace, African Folklore, those are the two form lines that the rest of the guys will have to watch the replay and make up their minds. Yeah, absolutely. Both Givers Grace and African Folklore. 
all of these horses, they uh, have uh, quite a bit of improvement still to come. But uh, for me, I'd, I'd be with the African folklore ahead of uh, the, the other runners here. There we go. So we're both in the camp at number 10, Captain's Christie. The stables turned the form, and Rahil mentioned the one and a half kgs off the back. Probably the winning recipe. It's good fun. Days like these are, are great. You get the whole industry together. Um, and to have, you know, companies um, and corporations like Interbet and Cape Racing who are uh, so generous with um, sort of time and, um, and energy into, into making a day like this possible, is, uh, it's, it's fantastic for everyone.